This video will show you how to translate a number of different statements that involve three or more predicates. So once we have more than two predicates, things start to get a bit complex and we have to pay attention to small details in the sentence. So here we have the statement, all birds have two legs and two wings. So we have the predicates bx is x is a bird and lx is x has two legs and wx which is x has two wings. So what we have to pay attention to is what, which of these predicates go in the subject and which of these predicates go in are things that are being said about the subject. So in this case, the subject is birds, is bx, x is a bird. So we say for every x, if x is a bird, then well then we have two predicates. It has two legs and it has two wings. Let's look at another example. So here we have another uh, universal statement. So every child will receive either a goldfish or a betta fish. So again, we need to pay attention to which of the predicates go are the subject and which are um, things that are being said about the subject. So the subject is the children. So for every x, if x is a child, then, well, x is either going to receive a goldfish or it will receive a beta fish. So we have to pay attention to the fact that the statement is not saying that necessarily it's going to get both. It's going to get one or the other. So that's how we would translate that one. Existential statements, on the other hand, we have um, the predicate CX and we have the predicate TX and we have the predicate DX. So CX is X is a cat, TX is X is cute, and DX is X is cuddly. And all of these are going to be joined by ampersands and it will be preceded by the existential quantifier. But now, in order to avoid breaking the two-chunk rule, we need to chunk this somehow. It doesn't really matter how we chunk it, because and is associative. But, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to look again at what's the subject. So the subject is cats, and then what's being said about the cats is that they are both cute and cuddly. So I'm going to put cute and cuddly together. It's really kind of arbitrary, but I happen to prefer that. Just because it kind of, I feel like it fits the sentence better. But either way would have been fine. Okay, now we have another universal statement um, with three predicates here. However, this time we have a complex subject. So here we have for every x, if x is a goal but it doesn't have a plan, then it's just a dream. It's not a goal, it's just a dream. So here, rather than having the two predicates be in the consequent of the conditional, they're in the subject because one predicate 
without a plan modifies the other predicate, the goal. We'll contrast that with this statement. This is always also a universal statement. It also has a complex subject, rainy days and Mondays. And then it has a thing that's being said about the, both those things, namely that they get you down. However, this one, we wouldn't want to say for every x, if x is a rainy day and it's a Monday, then it gets me down. Because that's too strong. Because it's really, if it's either of those things. So since both rainy days and Mondays get you down, well then for every x, if x is a rainy day or x is a Monday, then it's going to get you down. So the difference between this statement and the one be just before it is the one just before it we had one predicate that modified the other that modified the subject here we have two subjects in the sentence so whenever you have two subjects you're going to want to translate it as the antecedent of the condition but you're going to want to put an or instead of an and even though there's an and right there in the sentence so don't let that fool you. You still want an or when you translate the predicate statement.